Hey Geometry, continuing through with our properties of similarity transformations, um, we're going to do lesson 13. Lesson 13 is um, really a continuation on from lesson 12, so I've made lesson 13 decently short. This construction that we're going to do is um, probably one of the more difficult ones. Of course, I don't really like dilating letters. I think that's pretty difficult. But we're going to do um, quite a few transformations in for one drawing. So um, I follow along closely. And um, yeah, <laughs> write down any questions you may have, and we can look at it tomorrow. So first of all, let's just do a little review. Um, list the properties that all transformations have in common. So these properties we're going to list are true for all dilations, reflections, rotations, and translations. Um, the transformations that comprise similarity transformations. This also holds true for similarity transformations in general. So um, let's just list some properties. I'm going to push pause and write them down. Okay, here are the first three. First of all, distinct points are mapped to distinct points. Next, each point P prime in the plane has a pre-image, which we usually name P. Um, third, there is a scale factor R so that any points P dilate to P prime, or the scale factor times P equals P prime. Okay, there are a few more, so next slide. Be right back. Okay, the next and last three. First of all, a similarity transformation sends lines to lines, rays to rays, line segments to line segments, and parallel lines to parallel lines. That one is sort of like the, yeah, got it, duh. <laughs> um, two, a similarity transformation sends angles to angles of equal measure. Angles don't change in similarity transformations. And a similarity transformation maps a circle of radius r to a circle with radius um, scale factor times R. Okay, that again is sort of like a yeah, duh, got it. Okay, that was a good review. Um, now, example one in your classwork is the construction that we are going to work through or you're going to watch me work through. Um, the rest of them, I'm just going to give you the solutions from the books that um, you can study when you're going to study for an assessment or you can go back and look at when you go to work on your problem set, but we aren't going to actually construct those here today. We've done so many constructions, I think we get the point, and um, it just takes practice, but watching me do constructions um, on your computers isn't really the best form of practice. So let's look through this one. Similarity transformation G consists of a rotation about the point P by 90 degrees, followed by a dilation centered at P with a scale factor of 2, and then a reflection across line L. Find the image of the triangle. So the first thing we're going to do is rotate it. So we're going to take this triangle and about center P, rotate it 90 degrees. So it's going to end up up here somewhere. Then we'll dilate it at center P, a scale factor of 2, so it's going to get bigger out here, bigger than I can draw it, and then we're going to reflect it. Let's see, we'll use orange. Reflect it over this line. So reflection over this line is sort of funny. It's going to actually end up looking like this. So I know reflecting over a line at an angle is funny, but we'll step through what, um, what that'll look like. So I can erase this line. That's really what we're looking at. Um, see if I can do any better at labeling all of this. There we go. So if we rotate, this will be B, C, A, and then we're going to dilate so this will be B, actually double prime, C double prime, A double prime, let me label, prime, 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 and then reflect. This will be B triple prime, C triple prime, A triple prime. Okay, let's do that. 
I actually did it nicely, not in colored crazy pen. So the first thing I did was rotate about the point P by 90 degrees. Um, draw rays through each vertex of the triangle originating from P. So I drew that ray and this ray. Use, use each ray to form three 90 degree angles and then use the compass to locate each new vertex on the corresponding ray. So let me change colors. Here we see the original rays that I drew. Then I took my protractor and rotated it 90 degrees. Let's see. I went this way and that way. So that's my 90 degree rotation. Then I took a compass and just drew from B through my center point P and through C, which happened to hit A too. I was so happy when I saw that um, through my center P. And I knew that, let's switch colors one more time, right here is my new B, right there is my new C, and right here is my new A. I have my new triangle. B prime, C prime, A prime. Cool. Now the next thing you're going to see is the dilation. So I'm going to extend these lines up on the next page and take my compass and just measure from here and double it, right? Measure from here and then double it. So let's look at that. Oh, first I wanted to show you the triangle. Okay, it's very exciting. Next slide. All right, dilate the triangle from center P, a scale factor of two, so we just use our compass to double the length. So let's get the highlighter back out. I extended these rays to make sure I had enough space to double. And I've really just measured, you know, pointy end, pencil end. I measured to A and then pointy end, pencil end, I got a double prime. Okay, B, B double prime, um, and then C, C double prime. And I got the dilated triangle with a scale factor of two. Pretty simple. I liked that one. Okay, next we're going to rotate it over that line. And you'll see I've already draw, started drawing my construction lines. Um, from B double prime, I just I made it pretty long. I wanted to make sure that it was perpendicular to this line L. And I just used my set square. But let's look on the next slide. So um, here we're going to reflect over the given line. I need to create construction marks that determine the image of each vertex so that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of the segment that joins each vertex with, with the image. I used my set square to make construction marks perpendicular to I. So here, I might have to erase these in a minute. These are my construction marks through each vertex of my dilated triangle, and they are all perpendicular. Oh, it's a line L. I'm so sorry, I said I more than once through line L. Those are all perpendicular. And then really I'm just making sure that the distance from here to my vertex is equal on this side. And that goes further. So it isn't too hard if you really um, just break it down and look at just this detail, it would be line L. Um, but it gets a little messy when you draw everything, so let's look at the next slide. All right, so yes, I have all of my construction lines, which I just showed you, and then I did from the line to the vertex. I measured, and then I came over here and marked it. And it actually ended up being about right there, which, sorry, you see right here. So this distance and this distance are equal. I did the same thing for C, and it actually ended up being 
right there. So we have B triple prime and C triple prime. And A is down here a little bit. Okay, let's look at the next slide. I think I finished it. Nope, still working. Sorry. <laughs> so here I got B triple prime, C triple prime. So I measured over and over. Next slide. And then A. So distance from here to A. And here to A. So I got A triple prime. Cool. So we started out with, as a little bit of a review, this triangle here. We did a composition of transformations and we ended up with this triangle right here. Cool. And we have Christmas colors. Okay, what you'll see here is the next example and a few, um, a few exercises. So here we have a similarity transformation G applied to tra oh gosh, applied to trapezoid A, B, C, D. Um, sorry. Consists of a translation by vector X, W, right there. I said X, W, X, Y followed by a reflection of clock cross line M, followed by a dilation centered at P with a scale factor of 2. Love scale factors of 2. Recall that we can describe the same sequence using the following notation. If you could just pay attention to this. We haven't done much of the um, function notation, even though I said we were going to. Um, we haven't done too much. So just look over it. It makes total sense. You start in the middle and work your way out. So just read through this. Um, this first one, so if you look, um, transformation, translation by vector x, ray xy. That's the first thing we do. So to apply transla translation to A, construct C1. Um, a circle with radius, or center A, radius xy, and then construct circle 2, a center at y, and radius xa. So we're just trying to figure out where to put A prime, and it has to be parallel. Okay, so it's stepping through each step for you. I just didn't do the construction separately. And then um, the process for loc locating image B under the translation is also shown. Um, so a few circles, you know, we have circle with radius B, sorry, center B, radius XY, and then... A circle with um, center Y, radius XB. So, and where those two meet, we have B prime. So do that two more times for D prime and C prime. So we just drew this trapezoid. Next we need to reflect over vertex C prime over line M. So that's where we have our perpendicular bisectors and we just measure our distance. So if we connected, sorry, C prime to C double prime, if we connected all of these points, they are perpendicular bisectors. So that would be our reflection over line M. And then the dilation. So we have a dilation from point P. So we've drawn all of these rays out. That's the wrong ray. And we're just using our compass to measure a reflection with a scale factor of, sorry, not reflection, dilation with a scale factor of 2. And we have our final. Okay, and the last one, uh, similarity transformation for the triangle is shown by this given. Locate and label the image of triangle DEF under the similarity. So if we look, first we do 
a rotation about point A, 90 degrees, and then a dilation about point A with a scale factor of a half. Okay, we're going to show you the answer. Okay, there you go. Okay, look at it. Um, if you want to construct it, you can. I can help you tomorrow if you want to double check anything, but we're not going to step through this one. Okay, that's it today. Um, we have our lesson summary, everything we've talked about in the lesson. So read through it. Nice job.